Hi guys, welcome to Yarn Scrap Friday and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this little frog. And this is actually a request, but I'm not sure if it's from the same person or multiple people as a coincidence, but uh, someone has been repeatedly asking me to make a frog this week, so I thought why not give it a try, see if I can design one. And, uh, and this is what I ended up with. So I'm going to show you how to make this cute little frog. And for this frog, we're going to be using some DK light worsted weight yarn again. And I've chosen, this time we're going to be using, in this one, we're going to make an orange and white frog this time. In this one here, I use like a bluey green and a lighter bluey green for his belly. We also need a little bit of black for his eyes. You just need a tiny little bit of black. DK light worsted weight yarn as well. We're going to be using a three millimeter crochet hook and like I always say it's a good idea to have a pair of scissors and a yarn needle for sewing in those ends as well and you could use some toy stuffing as well but we're actually just going to use some scraps of uh, similar coloured yarn um, to stuff in as well so okay so let's begin. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start off with our main colour. So that's the colour that all the legs and the arms and the top of the body is made from. And if I can find the beginning of this yarn. And what we're going to do is we're going to work, we're going to chain four to begin. Chain four. So, one, two, three, and Four. Then what we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch into our first chain to form a loop. So just put your hook into that first chain and do a slip stitch. Put it straight through both loops and then that creates a loop of your chains. So they meet at the beginning and the end and in the middle of there is a little hole and into that hole we're going to work five single crochet. So just put your hook into the centre and ignoring how many chains you got now, we're just going to work five single crochet around those around those chains. So that's one, two, and this pattern is in US terminology. Three, four. And then all we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch into our first single crochet. So one, two, three, four, five. Slip stitch into that first single crochet. Go through both loops. Do a slip stitch and that joins the round. So by the end of that first round you should have five single crochets still. Then what we're going to do is we're going to chain one and we want to keep our chain one quite loose so bring up your yarn a little bit like that and then do a chain one and then in the same stitch that you slip stitched into we're going to go back into that same stitch you slip stitch into and do a single crochet. So you've effectively got two stitches in there now we're going to count our chain one as a stitch. Then in the next stitch we're going to do two single crochet, one, and another one in the same stitch, and we're going to do two single crochet in the other remaining three stitches as well. So two in the next stitch, one and two, then two in the next stitch. And then two in the last stitch. One and two. Then it always looks like you've got a another stitch there, but that's actually what I call a fake stitch. And just above that um, stitch that's confusing you is your chain one. So you want to find your chain one and slip stitch into that chain one. And if you kept it loose enough, it should be fairly easy to see. Just bring the yarn through and do a slip stitch to join the round. 
So by the end of round two, you should have 10 single crochet, 10 stitches, two, four, six, eight, nine, and 10, including that chain one. Okay, okay so moving on to the third round, what we're gonna do is we're gonna chain one again. So bring up your yarn, let's keep it loose again, do a chain one. And then we're not gonna go into this one we slip stitched into, we're gonna go straight into that next stitch and do two single crochet. So we do one single crochet, then go back into the same stitch and do another one. So you've got two in there. And then in the next stitch, we're just going to do one single crochet by itself. So just one. Then in the next stitch, we're going to go back to doing two single crochet. So you do one. And then another one in the same stitch. And then in the next stitch, we're going to do one single crochet just by itself. Just one. Then we're going to repeat that round doing two single crochet, then one single crochet, two single crochet, one single crochet, two single crochet. You should end on two single crochet. So, two in the next stitch. One, and two, and one in the next stitch by itself. Just the one. Then two in the next stitch. One and back into the same stitch. Do another one. Then one single crochet in the next stitch by itself. Just one. Then the last stitch we do two single crochet. One and another one in the same stitch. Okay, so you've got two in there. And then again, it looks like you've got another stitch there, and that's your fake stitch. And just above there is your chain one. So you want to find your chain one and do a slip stitch. Like so. So you've got a nice circle just working in the round. And by the end of that round, you should have 15 stitches. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to move on to the next round. And the next round. All we're going to do is we're going to chain one, let's bring our hook up again, keep it loose, chain one, then go straight into the next stitch and do one single crochet. We're going to do one single crochet in each stitch around, so just go into each stitch and do one single crochet. So you've still got a stitch count of 15, including your chain one. And then coming up to the last stitch, just one in there as well. And don't get tricked by that fake stitch, just next to that is your chain one. So we'll slip stitch into there to join the round. It's starting to look like a really tiny little beanie hat. You should still have a stitch count of 15 as well. Okay, so now we're going to move on to round five and six. And round five and six are the same, but what we're going to do is we're going to swap to the different colour on the belly. Now you can not, you can avoid doing this if you don't want to, if it's too fiddly. Um, but I will show you how to do it and where to do it on this video. But if you don't want to change colour, just literally work another two rounds of chain one, one single crochet in each stitch around, and slip stitch in the chain one to join. But we're going to chain one to begin in the same colour. Keep it loose. Then we're going to do one single crochet in the next nine stitches. So we go straight into the next one. And do one single crochet in the next nine. So that's one, two, three, four, five. 
six, seven, eight, and then on the ninth one, we go in as normal, bring our yarn through. But when we complete our single crochet, instead of yarning over with the orange to complete our single crochet, we're going to yarn over with the new colour, so in this case the white. So we're just going to yarn over with that, the white, and bring that through to finish our single crochet. And that just means that we get a neater start to our colour change. And then what we're going to do, now we're working in the white, is do one single crochet in the next five, or the last five. So you go into the next stitch, do a single crochet. Now you're working with the white, and you can see, because you joined the white at the end of that single crochet, it's created a nice, neat beginning of the new colour. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. So one single crochet in the next five in the white. And then there's our little fake stitch and just above that is our chain one. We want to put our hook into the chain one, but instead of yarning over with the white, we want to yarn over with the orange, or with the other colour. And I'm just going to tuck those tail ends out of the way a little bit. What you need to make sure is don't pull the yarn too tight because as you can see the orange ends the other side of our little frog body so um, so we don't have to keep fastening off and starting again. I'm just going to pull it straight over from the other side, bring that through my chain one and do a slip stitch to join the round. I'm going to pull the white tight but I don't want to pull the orange too tight. So just to make sure it's kept loose so you don't distort the shape, is just push the yarn down. And we're going to do exactly the same thing again, we're going to chain one, keeping it loose, and do one single crochet in the next nine, joining the white on the ninth stitch. So, one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight. Then the ninth one, we go in, bring the yarn through, but just before we yarn over to finish, we're going to bring back the white again. So we yarn over with the white and bring that through instead. But again, because it's coming from the other side, we just need to push down and make sure that it's not distorting our shape. So just make sure it's loose a little bit and pull the orange tight. And then we're going to finish up with one single crochet in the last five in our white. So one. Two, three, four, and five. And then we're going to join the round. There's our fake stitch that confuses us. And just next to that is our chain one. It's nice and loose. So we put our hook in there. Instead of yarning over the white, we're going to yarn over with the orange to join the round. So you still have a stitch count of 15, again making sure that the orange is kept loose because it's coming from the other side, Just push it down a bit. And there we go, so that's the end of uh, round 6 and by the end of round 6 you should still have a stitch count of 15 and it should look a little something like that. So you're introducing the, the belly colour. Okay, so let's move on to the next round. Okay, so moving on to round 7, what we're going to do is we're now working with our orange. And we're going to chain one to begin. So bring our, let's pull that white tighter. Make sure it's nice and tight. Keeping our orange loose. So bring our yarn up and do our chain one. Then we're going to single crochet two stitches together. So our next stitch is there. So we're going to go into there, bring our yarn through. 
go into the next stitch and bring the yarn through as well so you've got three loops yarn over pull through all three to single crochet two stitches together then we're going to do one single crochet in the next stitch by itself just a single crochet and then we're going to single crochet two together again so we're going to go into the next stitch pull through to the next stitch pull through so you've got three loops yarn over pull through all three and then we're going to do one single crochet in the next stitch by itself then we're going to single crochet the next two together so go into the next stitch pull through then go into the next stitch and pull through then yarn over pull through all three single crochet two together then we're going to do one single crochet in the next stitch but what we're going to do is bring the yarn through when we finish our single crochet instead of finishing with the orange we're going to finish it with the white and my white's getting all tangled <laughs> there we go so we're going to yarn over with the white instead and bring that through to finish our single crochet push down to make sure it's not distorting the shape of our frog and now we're working with the white we're going to do we're going to single crochet the next two together so we're going to go into the next stitch bring the yarn through into the next stitch bring the yarn through so you've got three loops yarn over pull through all three single crochet two together then we're going to do one single crochet in the next stitch by itself just one and that should leave you with two stitches and we're going to single crochet those two together let's so go into the next stitch and then the last stitch you've got three loops yarn over pull through all three to finish and there's our fake stitch there and just next to that is our chain one so you want to put a hook into there and slip stitch with the orange not the white okay so we're now working back with the orange I need to make sure that's looser so I'm just going to bring that up pull that white tight and just make sure I'm keeping the shape of my frog nice and neat okay so that's the end of round seven and then what we're going to do is we're going to chain one again let's bring our yarn up do a chain one and we're going to do one single crochet in the next six but we're going to rejoin the white on the sixth stitch so be careful not to get confused go into the next stitch do one single crochet in the next six so that's one might help to flatten the work as you go as well Two, three, four, five, and then on the sixth one, we're going to join our white. So go into the sixth one, bring the yarn through. But then we're going to yarn over with the white to finish the single crochet. And again, make sure not to distort the shape of your frog. It's so now working with the white, and we're just going to finish up with one single crochet in the last three. So it's one. Two and three and then we're just going to slip stitch there's our little fake stitch just next to that is our chain one which is quite big so put our hook into our chain one and we're going to yarn over with the orange you want to bring back the orange slip stitch to join the round so I'm going to bring that up tighten the white bring up the orange and make sure the shape is still there and your stitch count should have been reduced down on the previous round actually down to uh, back down to 10 so you should still have a stitch count of 10 after round 8 and it's at this point we want to stuff our little frog 
And what we're actually going to do is we can fasten off with the white as well. We're not going to be working with the white anymore. So you can cut that. Make sure it's tight and get the orange out of the way. I'm just going to push the tail end of the white onto the inside. And all you want to do now is stuff the body. So we're going to stuff the body either with yarn scraps or some toy stuffing. And then I shall come back and show you what to do next. Okay, so I've finished stuffing um, the little frog. And a little tip when you are stuffing is to use the end of some scissors to stuff rather than your finger because it uh, creates more friction. It's easier to get the yarn scraps in or toy stuffing in. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to rejoin our hook. And we're not going to chain one. We're just going to go straight into the next stitch. And so don't chain one. Just go straight into the next stitch. And we're just going to single crochet two together until the hole is closed. So go into the next stitch and then the next stitch. Bring the yarn through, so you've got three loops, yarn over, pull through all three. And just keep doing that until you get back to the beginning. And then we're going to sew the remaining hole closed. When it gets too fiddly you can just stop if you want to so I might just stop there I've already cut the yarn so cut your yarn and then get a yarn needle so your yarn on and then what we're going to do just to finish close up that remaining hole is go into the next stitch then out through the next stitch and pull tight and it creates like a drawstring effect then go into the next stitch and out for the next stitch. And then out into the next stitch and out the next stitch. And just keep doing that until the hole's closed, like so. Then what we need to do is hide this tail end on the inside. So to do that, we're just gonna sew into our body and come out somewhere, somewhere else. And the trick is don't pull too tightly on the end, you don't want to distort the shape. Then go back in exactly where you came out and go come out somewhere else on the body, doesn't matter where. Again, don't pull too tight, that just clips on the inside. And the yarn gets caught on the inside of your stuffing. And then one more, just go back in where you came out, come out somewhere else. Don't pull too tight and then all you do is push down on your body, pull your yarn tight slightly, trim, and then let go and the tail end is caught on the inside. Okay, so you should have a little sort of egg-shaped uh, frog body at the moment with a little bit of white. So you may not have done this, you may have just kept the same colour. It's entirely up to you. But what we're going to do now is we're going to work on his back legs. And to do that, I'm going to get the same coloured yarn as the main body and we are going to chain four using the same hook as well three millimeter we're going to chain four so one two three and four, four chains. Then in our second stitch from hook, and our second stitch from hook, we don't count the loop on a hook, there's our first stitch, there's our second, and in that second one, put a hook and do a single crochet in there. Now when you go into the chain, it's important to only catch one loop of yarn, so you only go underneath just the one loop. And the reason for that is we're going to work back into them the other side and it makes it easier to see them again. So we do the one single crochet in our second stitch from hook. Then in the next stitch we're going to do a double crochet. So again, just make sure you just catch that one bit of yarn and do a double crochet. Like 
like so. Then in the very last chain, we're just going to do a single crochet. So you do one single crochet, one double crochet, then a single crochet. Now we need to work back into these chains again the other side, but the first one is the same one we've just worked into. So go back into the last chain again and do another single crochet. So you end up with two in there effectively. And then you should see your project moving around. And that's your first chain, the last one you worked into, but the first chain that you made. So the second chain you made, you need to work a double crochet in. And if it gets a bit fiddly, you can just, just about see, if you find where the last stitch is, just go put your hook slightly over just down there and just push and it should if I move my tail end out of the way it should if there's the last one move slightly over it should just naturally find the stitch so put your hook into there and do a double crochet I have done a video in more detail working into your foundation chains so I'll put a link in the description to that anyway then in the very last one you can just about see the last one appear the last chain we're going to do a single crochet again okay so it should look a little something like that and if you pop it out push it out slightly you can see it's starting to make the back leg now what we need to do now is work some slip stitches back down this side it just makes the leg a little bit bigger so if you can find the next stitch so that first single crochet that you did we need to put our hook into there and do a slip stitch one slip stitch and into that double crochet that you did first double crochet you did we'll put our hook into there and do a slip stitch and then in that last single crochet on the first row we'll put our hook into there as well and do a slip stitch like so. so. It should look a little something like that. So you basically chain four, do one single crochet in your second stitch from hook, then a double crochet in the next stitch, then a single crochet in the last stitch. And then you need to work back into the chains again. So you do one single crochet in that first chain, which is the same one as your last one you worked into. Then one double crochet in the next one, and then one single crochet in the last one. And then we need to slip stitch down into the next three, back to this end. Then what we're going to do is we're going to chain six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So just chain six. And then you want to slip stitch into that last stitch that you did a slip stitch into. So go back into that last stitch and do a slip stitch like so, so you end up with like this little loop we'll do that again, we're going to chain six one, two, three, four, five, six so chain six and again slip stitch back into that same stitch again so slip stitch and do that one more time chain six, one, two three, four, five, and six. And again, slip stitch into that same stitch at the end. Okay, and there's your leg and foot made. So then you wanna leave a little bit for sewing, a little bit of yarn for sewing, trim that. Pull the yarn through. And then we want to trim down the beginning tail end and then we're going to take our yarn needle and sew in the longer end and the first thing to do is just sew into that next stitch and get it to the back and that just pulls in the foot so you want to push out your little leg and there's your little little foot shape and we take our body and then where the corner is of the white, or roughly in the middle, if you haven't changed colour, we're just going to put our little foot. And you want to just curve it so the, the uh, frog, I say fish then, the frog 
is looking upwards a little bit. So when you're happy with the positioning of your foot, leg and foot, we're going to sew, sew it on. So we just go into the body, come out the other side. Don't pull too tightly, just enough to secure it. Then go back in where you came out and come out onto the actual foot or the leg. Again, don't pull too tightly that side. The yarn should disappear. And then what we do is we just move over slightly, go back into the body, come out the other side, Do it tight enough that it's secure but not distorted. Back for the body and then out for the next stitch on the leg. And then over. Out for the body again. Then back in, out for the next stitch on the leg, and then I'm just going to go into the last stitch, come out somewhere else on the body, and then I think that's secure enough. And then all we need to do is hide this tail end so we go back in and just do what we did before with the body tail end. Don't pull too tight. Come back out again. Then I'm going to push down the body and hold that taut, cut, and then let go, and then the tail end should be hidden on the inside. So there we go, there's our first little fox leg. And I'm just going to repeat that again and uh, sew it on to the other side repeating the exact same thing okay so I'm going to do that and then I'll come back and show you how to do the little arms as well okay okay so I repeated that for the other side exact same steps and uh, sewn it on exactly the same way and again making sure that the frog is looking upwards a little bit and then all we're going to do now is going to work on his little um, arms we're going to use the same yarn as the body same color Let's just move him over slightly. And um, what we're going to do for the arms is we are going to chain five. Have to remember then, chain five. So chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Then in the second stitch from hook, again we don't count the loop on our hook. There's our first. There's our second. In that second one, we're going to do a single crochet. Then in the remaining three, we're going to do slip stitches. So go into the next stitch, do a slip stitch. To the next stitch, do a slip stitch, just pulling it through the stitch and the loop on the hook straight away. And the last one, a slip stitch like so and that's it that's that's his arm and then we're just going to leave a little bit for sewing on let's pull that through and then we just sew this on to his body so we're going to take this tail end first and I'm just going to sew it over to the other side of the end it just brings it in slightly like that creates a neater finish and then we'll just sew it onto his body. So it's going to sew it just over um, from his foot, like so. And we're just going to sew it the exact same way as we have been for the other parts. So just want it on that line where the white and the orange meet. And we'll just go over to the other side. Don't pull too tightly. And then we just go back in and then come out onto the arm again. 
again making sure don't pull too tightly and then we go over back into the body and out the other side again like so and I'll do it one more time going over out onto the little arm making sure not to pull too tightly it be very easy sometimes to pull too tightly without realising and then out one more time the other side I think that's on securely enough then we just hide the tail end go over somewhere else in the body same thing again we push down pull it taut but not tight then let go and it's hidden on the inside and of course you've got the ow just wipe my hand <laughs> of course we've got the other tail end as well and for that one all I'm going to do is just sew that straight into the body come out somewhere and then go over somewhere else and then same thing again push the project down, hold that taut let go pops in on the inside and there we go, that's his little his little arm created just hold out his leg there we go there we go, so his little arm we're just going to repeat that for the other side same thing again and sew that on and then I'll just come back and show you the eyes and then he's done Okay, so I've just repeated that for the other little arm and uh, and sewn that on, and there he is. All he needs now, all he needs now, if I can speak properly, are some little eyes. So we're going to take some more DK light worsted weight uh, black yarn, and we're just going to take a short length of this. I need to get some more of this actually. So it's going to take a short length, about that much, and then it really is just a case of sewing on some eyes. And I've just done like little just little lines for the eyes rather than anything else so you can sort of give yourself a general idea I'm just going to go in slightly crazily over there nowhere near where I want the eyes to be and then come out where I actually want the eyes to be there's a reason for that and then leave a little tail end like so and I'm just going to do a little sew upwards and then try and see where I want it to be the other side about there there we go and then when happy go down there and then just come out anywhere on the body there we go, there's our main little eyes like so, I've just done some little eyes Looks a bit evil that side, <laughs> but uh, we'll go with it. And uh, then all we need to do is hide these tail ends on the inside. And it's the same principle. We just go back in where we came out, come out somewhere else. That should disappear on the inside, but it gets caught on all this stuffing on the inside. Then go back in where you came out come out somewhere else this appears on the inside one more time go back in where you came out and just come out on the top That'd be easier to push it down then this appears on the inside same thing again we're just going to push the body down it's quite important to get this one right because it's black you can see on camera and then trim as close as you can and then let go and then that should disappear on the inside we'll do the same again with this tail end as well and uh, I'll just hide that and then I should come back and show you the finished frog <laughs> and there we go there's our little finished frog all finished so we can just stand him up put his little hands together <laughs> 
And there he is, he can meet his little friend as well. <laughs> so there you go, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. I hope you managed to follow along and it wasn't too fiddly, especially if you tried the, uh, the colour changes. And uh, yeah, I hope you like the little frog design. I just designed him this morning, so I hope he's, I hope he's okay. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Orange frog, I suppose that would be like a sort of jungle, tropical forest type uh, frog, poisonous frog. But of course you can make frogs in any colours you like. You can even make, you can make them green, you can make them brown, and uh, well, you can make them stripy, whatever you want to do. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed that and uh, I will see you soon for some more crochet fun. Thanks for watching guys. Bye!